Corfe Castle is one of the most fantastic and brilliant castles in England, but it does have a rather dark history of murder, sieges and regicide. It was the site where an Anglo-Saxon king was slaughtered on the orders of his evil stepmother, but it was also where a civil war siege would occur, and because of the strength and defence of one woman who owned the castle, it would at the end of the war be ruined and blown up. Today Corfe is a site which is one of the greatest ruins in England, However, there was a horrific dungeon within the castle, which became known as the Oubliette. Inside of this tiny and harrowing dungeon and cell, there were, on the orders of King John, 22 knights who were executed inside the Oubliette of Corfe, being literally starved to death. But there was also a woman who was subjected to this awful treatment, and she too was executed inside of Corfe Castle's Oubliette. Join us today as we look at the execution of the female victim of the Oubliette, and as always, to support our channel please make sure to subscribe. Maud de Breus, also known as Lady Bramber, was an English noble, and she was the wife of the fourth Lord of Bremer, William de Braus. He was a favourite of King John, a man who is often regarded as one of the worst kings of England, but the family would incur the wrath of the king later on. Maud was said to have been a virtuous woman, and she was also very intelligent and beautiful, and she was from very good standings, before she married her husband in 1166. But when King John became the King of England in 1199, Maud's husband became a favourite of him, and he was given the title of the Lord of Limerick in Ireland, and his wife was very supportive of his ambitions and aspirations. But Maud was also trusted by her husband, and she controlled Hay Castle and the lands around it, and she also defended Payne's Castle against a huge Welsh attack, showing how she was able to command a military garrison with skill and power, and during one attack her castle was besieged for three weeks, but her forces killed over 3,000 Welsh attackers. She also had many children with her husband, allegedly up to 16, and many of these went on to have very high-profile marriages. But things would take a drastic turn for Maud and her family. In 1208, her husband feuded with his former friend, the King, and Maud herself made a number of comments about the murder of King John's nephew, Duke Arthur of Brittany, who many wanted to be the King of England rather than John. However, it's believed that the family owed the Crown a lot of money, but the king ordered that Maud's son, William, was to be held as the king's hostage, while William, her husband, pledged his loyalty to the king. Maud refused to hand over her child, saying she would never deliver her child to a king who murdered his own nephew, and because of this dissent, King John rampaged into the Welsh borderlands and seized the castles under Maud and William de Braus's command. Maud then left for Ireland, however in 1210, King John sent a group of soldiers to go and locate her, and they were apprehended in Galloway, and were then held in Carrick Fergus Castle before they were sent back to England. Let's remember that King John, of whom Maud was now a prisoner of, was a man who was more than happy to subject his enemies to the most painful and horrific deaths. Maud was imprisoned first at Windsor Castle, before she was then moved to Corfe Castle, where she was placed inside the Oubliette there. As mentioned, this small dungeon was a site where 22 other knights would be killed, or had been, and it was found in the Butavant Tower. This was a small tower or lookout position of the Isle of Purbeck, and this tower was found next to the Great Hall, and was on the edge of the fortification. It would have been incredibly cold, and the dungeon here became infamous. It was small and cramped, and was referred to as an oubliette, a dungeon which was used with the intention of never letting the unfortunate prisoner out, and because of this the word oubliette means to forget. That was the purpose of this dungeon, to leave someone to rot, and someone would be starved inside of the small cold cell, and simply forgotten. But King John did allow his two prisoners to have a sheaf of oats, and one piece of raw bacon, and that was it. They were not allowed to have any more food. It took 11 days for more to be killed, and she was found dead with her son holding her head. Her son was killed and starved as well, and he was found sat up against a wall. It was said that Maud, who died last, was so desperate that she turned to cannibalism inside the Oubliette, and had actually consumed the flesh of her son's cheeks. What was shocking is the implications that the death of Maud de Braus had on English history. When people found out about the horrors of her ordeal, and what she was driven to, the nobles thought about how they could ensure this did not happen again. King John would later be forced to meet with his barons, and agree to their demands, in what became known as the Magna Carta, the piece of legislation and law that limited the power of the king, and held John responsible for his actions legally. In the Magna Carta, a clause, specifically Clause 39, states 
No man shall be taken, imprisoned, outlawed, banished, or in any way destroyed, nor will we proceed against or prosecute him, except by the lawful judgment of his peers, or by the law of the land. It is believed that this was influenced by Maud's execution and ordeal. The following year, Maud's husband died after he escaped England dressed as a beggar, and he managed to get to France, and he lived out his final days in exile. He had been declared an outlaw, however the treatment of Maud was shocking and barbaric, and it resulted in her horrific death where she was systematically and cruelly starved. She is remembered today as one of the only women in history to be executed inside of an oubliette in England, but her death inspired a piece of legislation which influenced many laws and statutes around the world, including even the Declaration of Independence, with her ordeal being cited almost inside of the Magna Carta. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.